Family Theater presents McDonnell Carey. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Transcribed, a special Holy Week broadcast starring McDonald Carey, narrating the passion and death of our Lord. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended all these words, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days shall be the Passover, and the Son of Man shall be delivered up to be crucified. Then were gathered together the chief priests and ancients of the people into the court of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas. And they consulted together that by subtlety they might apprehend Jesus and put him to death. But they said, not on the festival day, lest perhaps there should be a tumult among the people. And when Jesus was in Bethania, in the house of Simon the leper, there came to him a woman having an alabaster box of precious ointment and poured it on his head as he was at table. And the disciples seeing it had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this might have been sold for much and given to the poor. And Jesus, knowing it, said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For the poor you have always with you, but me you have not always. For she, in pouring this ointment upon my body, hath done it for my burial. I say to you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, that also which she hath done shall be told for a memory of her. Then went one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, to the chief priests, and said to them, What will you give me, and I will deliver him unto you? but they appointed him thirty pieces of silver, and from thenceforth he sought opportunity to betray him. And on the first day of the Azimes, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Pasch with thy disciples? And the disciples did as Jesus appointed to them, and they prepared the Pasch. But when it was evening, he sat down with his twelve disciples. And whilst they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, that one of you is about to betray me. And they, being very much troubled, began everyone to say, Is it I, Lord? But he answering said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, he shall betray me. The Son of Man indeed goeth, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man shall be betrayed. It were better for him if that man had not been born. And Judas that betrayed him, answering, said, Is it I, Master? He saith to him, Thou hast said it. And whilst they were at supper, Jesus took bread, and blessed, and broke, and gave to his disciples, and said, Take ye and eat, this is my body. And taking the chalice, he gave thanks, and gave to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which shall be shed for many unto remission of sins. And I say to you, I will not drink from henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I shall drink it with you anew in the kingdom of my Father. And a hymn being said, they went out unto the Mount of Olives.
Jesus said to Peter, Amen, I say to thee, that in this night before the cock crow, thou wilt deny me thrice. Peter saith to him, Yea, though I should die with thee, I will not deny thee. And in like manner said all the disciples. Then Jesus came with them into a country place which is called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit you here till I go yonder and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to grow sorrowful and to be sad. Then he saith, then he saith to them, My soul is sorrowful even unto death. Stay you here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell upon his face, praying and saying, My father, if it be possible, let this chalice pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh to his disciples, and findeth them asleep. And he saith to Peter, What? Could you not watch one hour with me? Watch ye, and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh weak. Again the second time he went and prayed, saying, My father, if this chalice may not pass away, but I must drink it, thy will be done. And he cometh again, and findeth them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. And leaving them he went again, and he prayed the third time, saying the selfsame word. Then he cometh to his disciples, and saith to them, Sleep ye now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Behold, he is at hand that will betray me. As he yet spoke, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the ancients of the people. And he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that is he. Hold him fast. And forthwith, coming to Jesus, he said, Hail, Master, and he kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, where to art thou come? Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and held him. And behold, one of them that were with Jesus, stretching forth his hand, drew out his sword, and striking the servant of the high priest, cut off his ear. Then Jesus saith to him, Put up again thy sword into its place, for all that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot ask my father, and he will give me presently more than twelve legions of angels? How then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that so it must be done? In that same hour, Jesus said to the multitudes, you are come out, as it were, to a robber with swords and clubs to apprehend me. I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple, and you laid not hands on me. Now all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then the disciples, all leaving him, 
fled. But they holding Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the ancients were assembled. And the chief priests and the whole council sought false witness against Jesus, that they might put him to death. And they found none, whereas many false witnesses had come in. And last of all, there came two false witnesses. And they said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God, and after three days to rebuild it. And the high priest, rising up, said to him, Answerest thou nothing to the things which these witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest said to him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tellest if thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus saith to him, Thou hast said it. Nevertheless, I say to you, Hereafter you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of God and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his garments, saying, He hath blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now you have heard the blasphemy. What think you? But they answering said, He is guilty of death. But Peter sat without in the court, and there came to him a servant maid, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And as he went out of the gate, another maid saw him, and she saith to them that were there, This man also was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I know not the man. And after a while they came that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for even thy speech doth discover thee. Then he began to curse and to swear that he knew not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which he had said, Before the cock crow, thou wilt deny me thrice. And going forth, he wept bitterly. And when morning was come, all the chief priests and ancients of the people took counsel against Jesus, that they might put him to death. And they brought him bound and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, who betrayed him, seeing that he was condemned, repenting himself, brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and ancients, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? Look thou to it. And casting down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, having taken the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the corbona, because it is the price of blood. And after they had consulted together, they bought with them the potter's field to be a burying place for strangers. For this cause, that field was called Heseldama, that is, the field of blood, even to this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was prized, whom they prized of the children of Israel, and they gave them unto the potter's field, as the Lord appointed to me. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus saith to him, Thou sayest it. And when he was accused by the chief priests and ancients, he answered nothing. Then Pilate saith to him, Dost not thou hear how great testimonies they allege against thee? And he answered to him never a word, so that the governor wondered exceedingly. Now upon the solemn day, the governor was accustomed to release to the people one prisoner, whom they would. 
and he had then a notorious prisoner that was called Barabbas. They therefore, being gathered together, Pilate said, Whom will you that I release to you, Barabbas or Jesus that is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. And as he was sitting in the place of judgment, his wife sent to him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Pilate saith to them, What shall I do then with Jesus that is called Christ? They say all, Let him be crucified. The governor said to them, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. And Pilate, seeing that he prevailed nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, taking water, washed his hands before the people, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. Look you to it. And the whole people answering said, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he, having scourged Jesus, delivered him unto them to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor, taking Jesus into the hall, gathered together unto him the whole band, and stripping him, they put a scarlet cloak about him, and plaiting a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, and a reed in his right hand. And bowing the knee before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And spitting upon him, they took the reed and struck his head. And after they had mocked him, they took off the cloak from him and put on him his own garments and led him away to crucify him. And going out, they found a man of Cyrene named Simon. Him they forced to take up his cross. And they came to the place that is called Golgotha, which is the place of Calvary. And they gave him wine to drink, mingled with gall. And when he tasted, he would not drink. And after they had crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, They divided my garments among them, and upon my vesture they cast lots. And they sat and watched him. And they put over his head his cause, written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were crucified with him two thieves, one on the right hand and one on the left. And they that passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple of God, and in three days dost rebuild it, save thy own self. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. <laughs> In like manner also the chief priests with the scribes and ancients mocking said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him now deliver him if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over the whole earth until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some that stood there and heard said, This man calleth Elias. And immediately one of them running took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. And the other said, Let me, let us see whether Elias will come to deliver him.
And Jesus, again crying with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in two from the top even to the bottom. And the earth quaked, and the rocks were rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints that had slept arose. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they came into the holy city and appeared to many. Now the centurion, and they that were with him watching Jesus, having seen the earthquake, and the things that were done were sore afraid, saying, Indeed, this was the Son of God. And in the hearts of the disciples, who had watched on the hill of Calvary, echoed the words of Christ. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Little children, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love than this no man hath, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Family Theater has brought you transcribed The Passion and Death of Our Lord, starring MacDonald Carey. The script was written by John Slott, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present The Courtship of John Dennis, starring Pat O'Brien, Bobby Driscoll, Rita Johnson and Stephen Dunn. Join us, won't you? This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.